brothers and sisters, the letter of the Hebrew invites us to search for things of no material. <coughs> Instead, we need to put all of our faith and spirituality in God's hands. We need God to be saved. And one condition to receive God's grace we need is, is to be humble. To be humble, we must practice humility. It is hard to do it when our hearts are chained to feelings of arrogance, anxiety, violence, pride, arrogance, falsehood, and vanity. Believing in those in the most intelligent of the richest, the wisest, want it to be first so everyone can see us. Jesus said, For behold, some or less will be first and who are some who will be first will be less. Today he is telling us to be humble in our relationship with God and to our relationship with our brothers and sisters. Remember, in God's eyes we are all equal and in facing death we are also equal. This tells us about being with our brothers and sisters and friends, relatives, whoever, ignore what anybody has done or whatever to hurt us or anything has said to hurt us or which hurts us. They don't mean to hurt us, but it does. And just like this person also, he's going to tell us to be equal with one another and love one another. God always said, Jesus always told us that love one another as I have loved you. And by this, you know, we're talking about like this gentleman that uh, we kind of with this <clears throat> had a father in which they were from El Salvador. And they were poor, and his father always got after him, telling him what to do and how to do it and all that. And to him, it was real boring to him. And it was real hurting to him that his father was always after him, telling him this and that, what to do. And, how to hold things and so he came to the United States. This gentleman got into a business. He was doing real good in business. I mean he lifted himself up, bought some property, bought himself a home, car, a nice of everything. Well his parents back in Salvador didn't have that much. Well his father once called him and told him, son, I would like to come to visit you. To the United States. He told him, fine, send him enough to be able to come over here. So when he, his father came over here, his father told him, I'd like to spend some time with you and all. He said, I'm sorry, Father. He said, But I'm very busy. I've got a lot of work to do and I got a lot of bills to pay and I got things to take care of. So he didn't spend much time with his father. Although his father had another son here, which his father went and spent the time with him. His son accepted him. He stayed here a couple of weeks. Still didn't see no sign of that other son. He said, I'd love to see my son. I would like to spend time with him. And his son would not even spare some of what he had of the righteous riches he had gotten here. So his father left, went back to Salvador. A month later, he called him again, son, I'm going to come to the United States, but I want to spend a little time with you. If you can, will you spend a little time with me at least? So he came back to the United States, and his son still would accept the cost. Uh, the way his father kind of treated him, of uh, being rough with him and all that, he didn't realize his father was doing all of this to help him in life as he grew older to be what he was going to be in his life, make something good out of himself. So this young man, you know, after having all these riches and everything, you know, like he tells us, don't look for the riches, anxieties, and all that, you know. And so he did. The father got sick, and his brother took him to the hospital, because he wanted to spend time with his brother again, because he would spend the time with his father. His father got sick, his brother called him and said, brother, you need to come and see that. He's in the hospital, he's very sick. So he's just making that up so that I can come to see him. He just wanted me to be there. So he didn't show up. He didn't go. Then 
his granddaughter came one day to say, Grandpa, I think Uncle's right. I think you should go and see Grandpa. Uh, he's, he's pretty sick in the hospital. Say, yeah, I'll go. I'll make some time. I'll go. But I'm too busy working. See, I got to do this work, you know. I got to make this money. I got too much work. So then, but he decided to go see his father. His father had died. His father died. <clears throat> he didn't get to see his father. He didn't get to share the last words his father had. And that's why his father had come, because he wanted to spend time with him, because he knew that he was already dying. But he didn't tell him that. He just told him he wanted to spend some time with him. That was his son. And he wanted to tell him how well he had done in his life. How good he did. But once he got up there, he forgot about that once down here. So no matter how high you get, Jesus tells us and God tells us, we're equal. We all are equal in God's eyes. So he's then buried his father. His father died on his own birthday. It was his birthday, and he was he that's when he died on his birthday. So they buried him. And they buried him in a muslin up here. And now money his other brother and the other family didn't have none. So he wanted to show off. Put his father, he said, I'm going to put him up here, and then when he gets time, I want to do a little cemetery in my hundred acres I bought and bury him over there in my house. So it happened like that, and he buried him there. Friday, he and Father Libardo went over there, and we had a service for him because his son wanted a service for his father. And his son pleaded with us to please do that service for his dad and all because he was hurt a lot. He was seeing his father a lot. His father was coming and he, he would see his father and his father would talk to him and would pull him out, didn't let him sleep or nothing. So he started drinking a lot. And he started pulling away from drinking all. He started drinking, he just worried too much about his work or his job. Then he had time, right? But it was too late. He, he had the time when his father was alive to be with him, but he found time for the mama. And Jan was still there. We went and did the services, and we left, and I called him. I said, sir, where weren't you there at your dad's services? You asked us to be at your services. And we went to do the service, and you weren't there. Your family was there. He said, well, my family was there. I, said, I had work to do. So you know what, sir, you'll never take none of that with you. Just remember that. He said, but I got this money here, and he said, I'll pay for everything, and I'll pay anything. It's not the money. It's the love here. His father had all that love for him, and was showing him all of that, so he could raise up, be up here, be righteous, be rich, and all that, be recognized and all. And he didn't share it with his father or that which was the main person. So the father is now in his place. And he said, I'm going to be buried right here in the bottom of my father. The other said, where are you going to be? He said, who's going to be on top? He said, my father is. Now he wants to put his father up there, right? It's too late. God tells us we are all equal. Even when we die, we are equal. We will all be buried on the ground, the same ground as everybody else. That's why he tells us to share with the poor, the blind, and the sick, and all of them. Be nice, be good to them. Share your love with them. Give them your love, because in God's eyes, God is seeing the love. And that's why you're going to be, when you go to God, you know, let me keep it, he's going to be recognizing you by what you shared in this life that you got riches and all of your love you gave to others that didn't have enough. So be good to each and everybody. Love one another as God has loved us. That's what he's asking us. 